And let's bring in our Hall of Fame co-host as well, Mr. Mark Henry. Mark, how are you, my friend? What's going on, man? I, I, Dave, I'm not going to uh, be somber. I'm, I'm not. I, I put my I put my lay on. Yep. And uh, I, I refuse. <clears throat> I refuse to be somber when all I had was positive interactions with Offense Seeker. Yeah, and, all positive. And Mark and he he lived a long. I mean, obviously, you never want to see anybody pass, but he was almost eighty years old, and I know he's been sick the last couple of years, so. I think, you know, today we kind of celebrate his life and career. We warn his passing for sure, but I think this is more a celebration of his life and career today. Yeah, and, and when you God-fearing and, um, you know, you've been in the house with your family for dozens of years, off the road, not doing booking shows, your sole existence is take care of the grandkids, kiss the wife, watch a little wrestling, watch watch my son be the best wrestler on earth. We always talk about Earth's mightiest heroes. Like Roman Reigns was one of Earth's mightiest heroes. And his father got to see that. Like, think about the we we all love our fathers. And, you know, I, I think that all of us have lost our fathers, right? Yes. yes. So all this time, Roman got to, got his dad got to see all his accomplishments. Not all of them, but everything till now. What's the sadness? As men, we got two responsibilities. Number one. Is love God more than yourself? Number two, if you have family, take care of your family above everybody. That was done in both cases. Like they both did their jobs. How can I be sad? I'm going to tell you, the, the first time that me and Dwayne, uh, we left Memphis, and we went and did a spot show for Offense Seeker. And I laughed because <laughs> um, I was still green green. And Dwayne, even though he had been in the family, he had only been training for like nine months, you know, at this point. And we go up there and he has a match with uh, Salvatore Sincere before he was Salvatore Sincere. And I was not really working i was just being uh doing a run-in and being the muscle i uh I, I everybody was getting envelopes they're getting paid and I, I went to alpha and i was like um um so how, how much how much am i making he said brother fence has been paying you you <laughs> He no sold me. I ain't get an envelope. <laughs> and he and then later on he came up and handed me an envelope. So I'm just playing with you, man. And he was like, I just want to see how you was gonna react. And the fact that I didn't act up and oversell, he told me I was gonna be all right. That's awesome. Yep, that's a hell of a test right there. They they the old school guys used to test you. Like today, we're we're afraid. I almost said we're scared. We're afraid to to do that because it's, it's, people can consider it hazing and yada yada. You know, we don't want no HR problems. But like back then, man, they they tested your uh, your will, your your intestinal fortitude. Um, man, I got hit hit. I mean, how like, many times? Shoot hit. How many times have you guys heard Mark and Tommy coming up in the business? Everything's a test. Yeah. How many times did you hear that term? Everything's a test. Yeah. But I, 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 and, and, you know, listen, you know, like, like Mark said, you know, times change and things evolve, but at the same time, I'm sure when it's a tight knit community, like pro wrestling, 
you want to make sure that that person is deserving to be part of your community. Are they going to are they going to work hard enough? Are they going to are they going to be a team player? Are you going to feel safe when you're in the ring with them? I feel like a business like pro wrestling that is tough. You need to have that type of testing going on to make sure that that person has the right to be in that community and to step in the ring with another wrestler. I I don't think there's anything wrong with that, Mark. You you know what I'm gonna miss though, Dave. I'm going to miss how they used to greet you. Every time Offense Seeker would see you, they would spend an hour hug, kiss on the cheek, hug, kiss on the cheek, all the boys. If 30 guys on the show, 30 guys getting hugged and kissed. It was just a, like a, you go and pay respect. Like, Tommy, we talked about this a couple of years ago about the shaking hands and right. taking pictures and all of the respect. Like, hey, don't be a mark. Uh, you, that was like two years ago. Um, I'm thinking about it now. The older guys did that with each other. It was just us marks that didn't do it. <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> Uh, to, to they, Mark's they all re- they respected each other. I think the last time I know I saw him at a convention, but like the last time I saw him at a WWE event was when we were feuding with the Wyatts, and the whole everybody was there, and and Sika was there because uh, Roman was on the show, and like the whole family was there, and exactly what Mark, you know, would say, uh, like you know, pat you on your shoulder. You know how you been? Talk to you, uh, and you do. You just have a conversation um, and try to get a little bit of wisdom from somebody who did it. You know, or like, did you enjoy the show? Oh yeah, or you had a good match. I remember one time, way back when uh, Rosie was working. Uh, I worked Rosie and Umaga. They were three minute warning, and they were there. Um, and they were also, you know, when Mark talks about proud, they all were talking about Roman's football career because mm-hmm. he was going to be like the guy who goes to the NFL, all that stuff. And like how proud of they, they were of, but you're talking about how proud I am of my brother, how proud I am of my son. And, you know, I'd be like, Oh, how's, how are things? And he'd be like, Oh, my son's doing great. He's in college you know, those type of things. But then, you know, he's like, man, you were such a good baby face for my son and the way you were selling and the people were really, really into it. Uh, Again, just getting bits of knowledge off of, I don't, every time I see him, he calls me a good boy. And like the only person who called me a good boy was my mom. And I always had that connection with Afa in the sense of like, he and he'd always ask how my mom was, you know. Um, again, just weird things that you remember. But now you're also dealing, like you know, as a peer, as opposed to the fan, which is a great crossover. But at the end of the day, you're still just going to be a fan, where you're like, man, I just had a conversation with Afa and Sika, or I just, you know, was talking wrestling with Sika. You know, uh, they were always on top, Dave. Always on top. I, I went. And, you know, again, reading, looking through the magazines, they're always in the main event. I saw this badass picture of them in these black and gold, like, track suits. And then I realized that's what they wore when they went to New Japan. And they're feuding with, uh, uh, they did, like, Anoki and somebody else, like, but just top, top acts everywhere they went. They came in with a reputation and came in, went to the top, and then they left the territory. 